Wait, did you miss that? Let's bring that back in slow motion. So that's just regular turning, but today I'm gonna blow your mind with polygonal milling. Other than being extremely satisfying to watch in slow motion, it's also an insanely useful technology to master. So stick around to the end of this video, guys, because I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about it. Now, unlike using an end mill to make your shape, Polygonal turning actually uses two rotating bodies to create a polygon. So your two rotating bodies are your polygonal holder here and your main spindle here. They have to rotate into each other, which means you have to do conventional cutting to make this work. If you try climb cutting, it'll stall out the machine pretty quickly. Don't ask why I know that. So there's a few things to consider when doing polygonal turning. First things first, you have the main spindle to your polygonal tool's ratio. That, and you have to worry about how many inserts are in your tool. If you have two inserts in your tool, and you're going at a two to one ratio to your main spindle, well two times two equals four, so you'll have a square. If you have three inserts in your tool, and you're going at a two to one ratio, well two times three equals six, you'll have a hexagon. It really isn't that hard. Another thing to consider is that depending on what ratio and what amount of inserts you have in your holder, it can lead to a more convex or concave shape. Now here I only use two inserts in this whole part. Luckily we have this chart here which will show us which amount of inserts and which ratio will give us the most concave and most flat results. So you might be wondering why you would use polygonal milling as opposed to milling with just a regular end mill. And the reason for that is that in a lot of cases it can wind up being faster. You can get a way better surface finish than you ever could with an end mill. And if you were making a thin flat for like a thin wrench, it's the quickest tool by far. You're not gonna be able to mill a 1 8 wide flat on a big diameter as fast as this thing's gonna rip through it. There's just no way. You might be noticing that I keep saying polygonal turning and polygonal milling. And that's because I've read several manuals on this and I've read some that say turning and I've read some that say milling. So which one is it? I'd like to know from you guys down below in the comments section, which one it is. Let's settle this debate. Is this milling or is this turning? And I'm sure this argument won't get toxic whatsoever. Now that we've gone over some of the basics of polygonal turning, let's take the holder out and actually see how this thing works. Follow me, camera guy. So this is our polygon attachment. Now, not every polygon attachment looks the same, but this is pretty much gonna go in some section of your live tooling area. So you can see here, you have the gear which drives it. All right, so this is your polygon attachment right here, and this is the head that holds your inserts. So let's take that off and check out the different configurations we can do. All right, so this is our milling cutter. Is that cutter. a shell mill? What? Dude, that kind of looks like a shell mill. You can't put no shell mill in a Swiss machine. Well, did you, did you tell them about the shell mill that we have on sale? I actually haven't yet. You should tell them. Well, we actually have three inch Dodeca shell mills with 10 inserts on sale at our Titans of CNC store right now. We sold out of the two inch Dodecas, but we still have three inches available with 10 inserts. Go pick yourself up one at titansofcnctooling.com. Really helps us support free education. Yeah, it helps support things like CNC Expert, a website you can go onto right now and get certified for either CAD, CAM, or CNC machining for free. And it's not just for machinists, it's also for shop owners and managers. You can think about it, guys. If you need to find that next excellent source of talent in your shop, this is gonna be the best way to do it. And it's all for free. Okay, so maybe that's not a shell mill, but it looks complicated, which means Barry probably couldn't use it. Keep up the good work, man. Yes, friendship. All right, let's get back into this. So our milling head can actually have three different configurations. You can either have one, two, or three inserts set up in it. All right, and now for the final part of this video, let's go over the programming. It's actually a lot more simple than you think. It's just one G code. So yeah, as you can see here, you just put in G51.2. G51.2 keeps the main spindle and the live spindle in sync, and they have to be in sync, just like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I can't believe that band broke up. So after G51.2, you have your P and your Q value. These are simply just your ratio. P is a one in this case, Q is a two in this case. And you'll notice a negative two, but that's because I had to spin the live tool backwards to be conventional cutting. So you might not have a use for polygon turning in your shop. And if you can't find a good use for it in the aerospace, medical, or whatever industry it is you're making parts for, you can always make some fabulous jewelry 
Ha <laughs> ha, that's right, Mom. You thought I was just making parts for different sectors of the manufacturing industry. Turns out I'm also a jeweler. <laughs> All right, that's it for our video today. I hope you guys liked it. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit like, and leave some nice comments like these ones below. And also, don't be stupid. Ring that notification bell. See ya. <laughs>